If Google Trend Data is any indication of what demand looks like for Tesla, boy are you in luck because the Google Trends are at the highest consistent level in over a year. And this does go along with what Elon Musk said on the earnings call that for the start of 2023 for January, they are seeing two Tesla's being bought for every one that they can produce. Elon said it's roughly that a little bit less, but basically around that, uh, you know, one to two calculation. Now the interest for Tesla coming in at the number one spot is my home state of Michigan. And in Michigan, it's, it's a very interesting demographic. Like if you guys are in California or you're in Florida, you might think to yourself, how can Tesla expand anymore? There's Teslas everywhere. But believe it or not, where I live in Michigan, I barely see Teslas. I, I, you might get like one or two a week that you see. And trust me, I pay attention. I've actually seen, uh, Rivians too, uh, which is interesting. I've only seen like two or three of those on the street. Uh, but I pay attention to these things because I am in the investment world and I want to know what is getting popular when I see it. And I do see more Teslas now than I have seen over the, the years, right? But there's still such a lack of penetration in some of these markets. I think this is a very positive sign. And that's the first thing that I wanted to share with you guys. But there's kind of three bits of news that also came out with Tesla that we're going to cover here in this video. And then we're going to get into some of the economic data coming next week. But more importantly than that, because there isn't a lot of economic data, it's going to be Fed Jerome Powell's speech on Tuesday. So if you guys like the insight and the data that has already been reported to you guys here in this video, do me a quick favor and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, especially if you make it to the end of this video, guys. So let's talk about what happened on Friday. First things first, Tesla stock was up about 1% in regular trading, surging about 1.5% in after hours trading. And a lot of this does have to do with the news that we did get and there's been a lot of good news recently for tesla i would say one of the best bits of news is that the irs you guys gotta love the irs they are increasing the model y ev tax credit eligibility so this says Tesla shares are trading higher today, and this was posted on Friday, as the IRS updated its criteria for what qualifies as an SUV, and this means more EV tax credits are available. According to the new rules, the IRS will use the EPA's guidelines for which vehicles qualify as an EV or or as a SUV or crossover, meaning all models of the Tesla Y qualify for the higher $80,000 price cap for the EV tax credit. The tax credits, which are funded via the IRA Inflation Reduction Act, previously used IRS guidance that only classified the seven passenger variants of the Model Y as an SUV. And here is what the IRS had to say. Quote, to make it easier for customers to know which vehicles qualify under the applicable MSRP cap, the Treasury is updating the vehicle classification standard to use the consumer-facing EPA fuel economy labeling standard rather than the EPA uh, CAFE, C-A-F-E standard. This change will allow crossover vehicles that, are, that share similar features to be treated consistently, the Treasury said in a statement. Now, this is a very good development for Tesla, meaning that more of their vehicles will be able to be covered under this tax credit. And that's something that I'm very bullish on for Tesla in 2023. I think the whole EV tax credit is really not being looked at by analysts the way that it should be. I think it's going to add a lot more demand to Tesla than any of these analysts, really any of them. I, I, I haven't seen an analyst that is like right with this. And we'll see what happens by the end of the year. But I, I do think there's going to be a lot of demand for 2023 that is basically unaccounted for within Tesla by analyst. Now, the second bit of good news, 
is that Elon Musk will not be held a held accountable for funding secured tweets and this says late friday tesla ceo elon musk was found not liable in a class action shareholder lawsuit over his 2018 funding secured tweets in august of 2018 when he said he was mulling taking tesla private musk also tweeted that quote investor support for a deal at 420 a share was confirmed funding was not in fact confirmed but musk attorney argued in san francisco federal court that in the moment he didn't think tesla sacro slightly after hours friday he just didn't think just he just didn't think he just said something he didn't think about <laughs> i'm not i'm really not here to argue it but that's only something a billionaire could get away with. That's kind of funny. Hopefully you guys didn't lose money uh, by what happened in 2018. Probably not. Beyond me. I, 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 I don't know if they paid the judge or, or what. I don't really think that's a reason uh, to not be held accountable. But I'm not going to argue because I'm a Tesla shareholder. And it's definitely bringing up the value of Tesla. Now, this says on Saturday which is today, Tesla raised Model Y prices by $1,000 to $1,500 while trimming the base Model 3 by $500. On Friday, the Biden administration revised EV tax credit eligibility, like we just talked about, making all Model Y vehicles eligible for the $7,500 tax credit. Now, <laughs> the markets are going to love this with Tesla. Tesla raising prices. And this is always going to be a positive thing because on one front, it shows you that Tesla's obviously seeing good demand if they're able to raise prices a even a little bit after they cut prices. And it's going to give them incrementally a uh, higher margin, right? It's, it's not going to make a huge deal in the grand scope of things. But if you're talking hundreds of thousands of vehicles, millions of vehicles for 2023 uh, being sold, it will make... A difference but bigger than that it's showing you that demand coming in warrants price increases that's very good after all that has been the whole story of Tesla and why Tesla really sold off in the first place was demand concerns now that is it is confirmed that there is no demand concerns there's no lack of demand Elon did say who knows what could happen throughout the rest of 2023 he don't know if it's gonna stay like this or if it's gonna die down but as of right now, it's looking very good. So those are the three bits of good news. Tesla not being held accountable for the class action lawsuit that is literally making almost every Tesla headline piece. You also have the Model Y. Now all models being eligible for the $7,500 tax credit. You're also seeing Tesla raising prices slightly on their Model Y where they're dropping prices less on the model three all in all these things are very welcoming news for tesla now let's get into what to expect in this next upcoming week and as far as economic data is concerned you're not going to have anything on monday but on Tuesday, you're going to get the balance of trade for December. This is not really important to the markets. The markets don't, re don't react to this really at all. It's highlighted in red like it is a big volatility catalyst. But the markets don't care about this at all. Let me be honest with you guys. This is a dud as far as data is concerned. But what is not is Fed Jerome Powell. And he's going to be speaking at 1240 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday. Now, why Fed Jerome Powell is going to be important is because if he didn't get the reaction he was hoping for out of the markets, he could very easily bat this market down. He could say, did you see the payroll report on Friday? We increased jobs by half a million. Wages are up 4% year over year. This is not good. We're going to need to tighten a little bit more. And he could put a very sharp end to this rally. Now, what we seen last week was the opposite of that. Fed Jerome Powell said, yeah, inflation's coming down. There's one area, only one area we're concerned about, and that is services x housing. But we still think that will come down eventually. He basically green lighted this market to rally. 
He basically said, I'm okay with the markets being where they are at with the loosest financial conditions that you have seen since this time last year when the federal funds rate was less than 1%. So there's been quite a bit of easing. Fed Jerome Powell is on boy board with that. I think that is because they're more and more convinced inflation is coming down. And if he doesn't talk the markets into the ground, well, soft landing looks to be more promising. And I think that's why the markets are pretty happy. Fed Jerome Powell, if he wants to bat the markets down on Tuesday, he could very easily do that. And that's going to be the big question is, does he like this rally that we are seeing, the loosening of financial conditions? Is it time for that? Or does the Fed have other plans in mind? On Wednesday, you don't have anything. On Thursday, you don't have anything. And then on Friday, you will get a very important piece of information. And that comes out at 10 o'clock in the morning. So 30 minutes after the cash open does start. So everyone will be able to trade this is the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey. Now, What's really important in this is the Michigan inflation expectations. That's the big one because inflation expectations, if they go higher or lower, that's usually where inflation tends to go. If inflation expectations go higher, inflation tends to go higher. If inflation expectations go lower, inflation tends to go lower. And, and, and that's basically straightforward. If business owners well, I should say, if consumers, if you go to a restaurant, let's call it a Mexican restaurant, and you order a burrito, and next year, you're like, yeah, I think that burrito is going to go up in price. If you're more willing to accept a price increase, you have higher inflation expectations, you tend to get that price increase, call it a year down the line. That's basically the easiest way to explain how inflation expectations work their way into actual inflation numbers. What we've seen so far is inflation expectations have been very tame, but I think that could be something that could really upset the markets coming Friday if inflation expectations do tick up to the upside. But all in all, after coming off of last week, the markets are in a much healthier spot than where you were over the last couple of weeks. And that is it. Stock kitty out. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section if you guys learned anything at all in this video. But most importantly, enjoy the rest of your weekends, and I will see you in the next one.